<laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so this is the <laughs> this is the problem that we went through for the quiz, and let's just go ahead and derive. Um, well, let's go ahead and first of all just read through this, okay, just to make sure we have all the information that we need. We have a jacket, okay, jacket, jacketed reactor. We have the TT, that's our temperature um, transmitter, okay, and TC, what is that? Temperature controller. What's the I I slash P? Okay, yeah, converts the current uh, milliamps into pressure, PSIG. Uh, and then we have a valve here. Okay, so this is our, our valve. Um, and then uh, we're so we're trying to maintain a temperature in our reactor. Let's go ahead and just um, draw a, uh, a diagram here. This is our temperature that we're trying to maintain. We have a process. What does that transfer function represent? <coughs> Okay, what c what comes into this transfer function? So so you, yeah, you have you can manipulate your valve. Okay, your valve right up here. Uh, so this is your uh, flow flow rate. I, I always find it very helpful to just label the streams as I'm building these block diagrams, so I know what's being converted <laughs> from what to what. Okay, and then we have a measurement here. I'm going to write that as gm. Okay, and what is what does that represent? Yeah, so it's it's this thing right here, the temperature transmitter. Okay, that's the that's the measurement, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to save myself just a little bit of room, coming back, um, and then I'm going to have a controller. What is what is that repre uh, What is how is the controller represented on that diagram? Okay, so this is the this is the controller, and we're going to do a stability analysis. We can really only most times only do a stability analysis with either a PI or a P only controller. Um, most people just do it with a P-only controller just to get an approximate gain for their controller, the limits of their, their gain, uh, upper and lower limits. Okay, so this is just going to be a KC value for our, our controller. Okay, and then um, what is, um, so this is a, uh, what, what kind of units are those right there? Uh, this temperature right here. Okay, so that's degrees. Degrees Fahrenheit, you know, this is also degrees Fahrenheit we're splitting off. And what is this measurement here after we've converted it? Okay, this is milliamps. Okay, good. Okay, and then uh, we have a set point. Um, what is the, what are the units of that? Okay, that's degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then uh, we want to convert that into a milliamp because we want to be able to compare milliamp down here to this milliamp. Okay. And so how do we do that? How do we convert from a degrees Fahrenheit into a milliamp? Like the range is which it's, it, your measurement. Okay. Delta yeah, so it's, it's going to be a delta. Um, so y y you can also just take it just here from the GM, okay, that you had. That's going to be KM over tau M S plus 1. If you have no dynamics, then this tau M is just going to go to 0. It's very, very fast. But in this case, we have some dynamics with our measurements, so tau m is not equal to zero. And some of you also took, uh, you know, you could have a delay, like let's say an analyzer. That might be a 10-minute delay there um, for an analyzer. We have no delay in this problem, okay? Uh, it's just going to be a pure time constant for the lag. Okay, so some cases like a thermal couple, remember you guys did that for a furnace? You guys had a... Um, uh, uh, you guys did this analysis where you were trying to determine the time constant, see if you could measure those fluctuations inside the furnace, you know, with the mass of the thermocouple. That's effectively what we're doing here. We're trying to model this this temperature transmitter, like a thermocouple and the dynamics. And you have um, quite a quite a large dynamic here, um, five tau m equals zero point five. Okay, so that that came from requires about 0.5 minutes for a reading to reach its final value uh, 5 tau. Okay, so that is where the uh, tau m comes from. So tau m, I'll just go ahead and start with that, 0 0.1 uh, minutes. Okay, for that that one. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and finish building this. I have what comes out of the um, the PID controller? Okay, yeah, so that's a milliamps, okay, and then you have a transfer function here, and what is that transfer function? You're trying to convert it from milliamps to something else. Okay, to a, a pressure, okay, so that is the KIP, or the I to P 
uh, you know, conversion. And then you have something else here. Okay. And that's just a K for a valve. Our valve is our valve fast? Yeah, it doesn't have any done in yet. Okay, so it said here that we have um, the valve on the cooling water inlet fails in the open position, so it's air to close. So at um, you have the 360 gallons per minute of water when completely open. Um, the pressure drop is constant. Uh, valve dynamics are negligible. Okay, good. So no dynamics in that in that valve. Okay, so are we missing any other uh, transfer functions here? Hope not. You hope not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Being a yeah. Okay, oh, Cameron, do you have a question? I was Okay, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and start with KC. What value of KC do I have to have? I mean, what? what yeah, so the units are going to be um, uh, dimensionless, right? I mean, it's going to be milliamps over milliamps, but how do, what value of KC do I need there? Do I need a 2? Do I need a 3? Do I need a 5? Okay, yeah, so that's that's the question right there. What values of KC will make this stable? I'm betting all three of those will be stable. Logan says all three, okay, will be stable. They're all contained. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's do the um, let's do let's see if we can extract some information in our uh, in, up here on KM. First of all, we already got tau m, right? The time constant for our measurement. What about um, KM? Okay, so we're trying to get a degree Fahrenheit to a milliamp conversion. Okay, so we have a um, 4 to 20 milliamps is, is pretty standard, and then 3 to 15 PSIG is pretty standard for delta pressure. Um, and then we also have a, a range of 200 to 400. So what does the, the 200 correspond to? Okay, that's going to be 4 milliamps. And then what does the 400 correspond to? Okay, 20 milliamps. Okay. So that's going to be equal to uh, 200 over 16. And what does that value equal? 200 divided by 16. Okay. Well, anyway, if anybody has a calculator, we'll, um, or we can just do that in. Okay. So yeah, yeah. That's uh, degrees Fahrenheit over milliamps. Let's go ahead and check this because we need to be able to convert it from a degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going to be the opposite of that. Okay, so KM, and I believe that's 0 0.08 um, milliamps per degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so we've got our, our KM value, and that same KM value is used here. It's really important that the KM value here and there are the same. Okay, you just have a different, you have a tau. Why don't you put the tau right here? Why don't you put the tau M S plus 1 there? <laughs> Yeah, so you're trying to translate a set point into a milliamp so you can compare those two. But you don't want any delay in entering in the, uh, the set point, right? You just you want to request a new set point right away. You want no delay there. Okay, so you don't need the tau ms plus 1 there. Okay, the kms are the same. Yeah, that's right. You want to have those kms be the same. Okay, so let's, let's do the kip. So we're trying to get a um, translate a, a milliamp okay into a PSIG and um, so let's just do that okay so yeah we had a uh, a PSIG I'll do that in the numerator this time so it's it's uh, what are the ranges on the PSIG okay 15 minus 3 PSIG divided by 20 minus 4 PSIG okay <laughs> 0 0.75 PSIG divided by, uh, I sorry, I got, I should have had milliamps there. Okay, so we've got our KIP. Um, what about our um, our valve now? So I think you guys were all asking kind of about the valve. No dynamics. Um, I'm I'm just going to go ahead and write this up here. KV when it's fully open. What's the what's the flow rate? Okay, 360, and when it's fully closed, zero. zero. Okay, gallons per minute. Okay, and then when it's fully open, what's the pressure? So it's an air to close, right? 
because you, you have to apply pressure to close it. So it's three, it's three to 15, so it's gonna be uh, three minus, and then the 15 corresponds to all the way closed because as you apply more pressure, you're closing this valve, okay? Yeah, it's at least great change. Great change. Okay, so we have, and this is going to be PSI G. I don't know why the date thing is coming up there. Okay. I got, I got to go back and reevaluate your life, rethink your life. Okay. Okay, so 360 divided by 12, and that's negative 12. Thanks. PSI G, and that's negative uh, 30 GPM per PSI G. Okay, so there's our, um, you know, we have PSI coming in. You want to make sure the units are right. PSI coming in, that's going to be on the, in the denominator, and then the GPM coming out in the numerator. Okay, and then we also have our GP, and that was given to us. What do you guys know about this system already, just by looking at the roots? So it's second order. Okay, good. And uh, what else do you notice about the value of the roots? Oh, we got problems. We see have that, problems, so. See that one uh, plus and one minus thing going on there? Yeah, so we have a, a root here, okay. So S equals negative one and S equals a so uh, positive unstable. one half. So it's inherently unstable. So we have to have a controller, else this system will be unstable, okay. And so let's go ahead and just take all of these things and you, know, you can plug them in, you can build a simulink diagram, okay. Or we can do a, just a root locus plot. So let, let's go ahead and just, um, and to do a, a root locus plot, what we're going to do is um, just a series of commands. S equals transfer function S, okay? And then you have the, the next command. You need to get your G open loop, okay? So I'll just do G open loop equals, and now, now you have G open loop and G open loop prime. Uh, back in the day when they did these step tests, what they would do is they'd break these connections and just put a milliamp set point in and then get a milliamp signal out of their transmitter. Okay, and that was what they referred to as G open loop because they opened up the loop. And so you take all the transfer functions between these two X's. So you take uh, the measurement, you take the process, you take the valve, the I to P, and then you vary the, the, the gain. Okay, so that, that one is going to be, um, let's see, so that, that one's going to be uh, KC times K I P times K V G P and G M. Okay, and when you're de uh, developing an overall transfer function, okay, so let's say temperature divided by temperature set point, that's just going to be G, they call it G open loop prime divided by one plus G open loop. Okay, G open loop prime is the direct. Okay, it's a little bit of, of, of terminology in the book. I think it might be G open loop prime or also might be G open loop like a tilde or something like that. That's okay. Direct. Yeah, that's so this is uh, the <laughs> shortcut method for getting this transfer function between the output and the input. But what we're doing is just plugging in this one, okay, into into MATLAB to be able to get the root locus plot. Oh, you only plug in G O L. Yeah, G O L. That's the only thing you plug in. Okay. So um, yeah, so this is the the G closed loop. Okay, what we we call the G closed loop. But in order to be able to get this, we are only interested in the roots of the denominator, which is what the root locus plot will show us. Okay, because we're setting that equal to zero and finding values of KC for which we'll have a stable system. No, it's always been G open loop. Yeah, but. So let's go ahead and, and do this. What, what was my value of KC again? Okay, so that's the question mark. So what we'll do is we'll just set that equal to 1 and then let, um, basically let uh, MATLAB determine what that value is once it generates the, the plot. And then KIP was what? What was KIP? Uh, it was set 0 0.75. Okay. And then uh, KV was, yes, yeah, so a negative 30. And then GP was um, uh, is up above, right? So we had the uh, 
negative 0.7 Okay, and then that's s plus 1, and then 2s minus 1. Okay, and then what, what about my uh, gm, I think it's 0 0.08, divided by 0 0.1s plus 1. Okay, so we have our g open loop. Let's go ahead and plug that in to, to MATLAB now. Okay, so s equals transfer function s. Okay, just to get our, our transfer function, and then g is going to be, okay, now help me out with that because I don't have that in front of me. One or, yeah, zero, or KC, I don't know. Okay, 0.75, we'll just make that one. Times negative 30. Okay, times negative 30. Times negative 0.7 over S plus 1. S plus 1. Okay, times 2S minus 1, and then. Okay, 0 0.1 times s plus 1. Okay, so we have our g open loop transfer function. And if we do a root locus plot right now, okay, we're only going to be able to see things from 0 on up. Okay, but we want to make sure that uh, it's going to be stable. Um, let's go ahead and define our own k values. Okay, so I'm going to get... <laughs> Yeah, so I could do something like this. I'm going to do 10,000 points, ah, yes. for example. I, I put the semicolon there just so it suppresses the output. Yeah. Okay, otherwise you're going to see 10,000 points. Which okay, more. Which is a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, and then just generate another root locus plot. Now, now in MATLAB, one of the tricky things is it doesn't show negative values. So um, I'm, going to, I'm just going to dial in here. I've got... Remember, I went from negative 15 to 20. It shows 15 right here. Um, and then that was 20. Okay. So it, it just kind of, it's kind of tricky because it never shows a negative value there. I don't think the MATLAB developers really uh, thought that you could have a negative gain in there, that you'd want to see it. So they just put positive there. Okay. But it's actually negative. But the zero value is right here. Okay. It's, it's uh, right at uh, that, that so you, basically what you're doing is you're tracking, um, let me go back here. So you're tracking from negative 15, you're seeing where it crosses, okay? So at that point, you have about a 0.7 or so, okay? And as you continue up, okay, you're like, well, should I track the red or should I track the green? What do you guys think? Okay, so those are going to be the same because they're always symmetric, okay? between the red and the and the green. Can you explain what each of the colors lines Okay, yeah, so what do what do each of them represent? So this this point right there represents when uh, KC equals zero. Okay. Um, and that's your unstable system. It's just inherently right. unstable. It's on the right hand side. That's right, because there was a pole on the right hand side of the plane and that happened um, you know somewhere well I guess I, I guess that's a a gain of, well, let me get to a gain of zero here. Okay, but that, that's if, if you had a gain of zero for that uh, controller. Um, and then as you um, start having a controller, you're going to make the system stable. But here, if you have something right here, let's say 0 0.5, okay, that's unstable, but is it going to oscillate or not oscillate? So it's, it's going to be unstable, but it's not going to oscillate because there's no imaginary part, okay? So it has to have an imaginary part to it to oscillate. Okay, so at this point, it's going to go unstable, but is it going <coughs> to oscillate or not oscillate? It's going to oscillate because you have some imaginary So right there, like on the left side of the axis, is that stable oscillating? That's going to be stable oscillating. Yep, that's right. So let's go ahead and just dial in a few of these just with step response just to confirm our assumptions that this is going to be stable or unstable at those points. And so how do we, how do we see what the, um, the response is going to look like? How do we see? Okay, so we could use Simulink. Um, another way to do it is just get a closed loop transfer function. Okay, so let's just do a G uh, closed loop. Okay, and that's going to be equal to... Um, Okay, I'm, I'm just going to...
copy something from above just by hitting the up arrow. Okay, because I want to just do G open loop prime. G prime, okay, is that. And then I'm just going to do G, uh, G closed loop equals G prime divided by 1 plus, and then I have to have a KC value in here now. So what, let's do a 0 0.5 KC value, okay? And then we'll have a, uh, let's see, that also has to go in the numerator too, so let me put that in the numerator. 0 0.5 times, because that was the direct divided by 1 minus, uh, 1 plus the loop, and so the direct has the KC value in it as well. Okay, so 0 0.5 times uh, G, and I, I think I just called that G, right, for the other G. Okay, so I have a closed loop transfer function, and let me just do a step on that. Okay, and if I come back to, okay, so it was unstable, but it was oscillating or not oscillating? Not oscillating. I don't know what, a little bit of numerical error there once it got up to 10 to the 14th or so. Okay, so let's uh, let's make something that's stable now. Okay, so um, right at the border, I think it was about 0 0.8, 0 0.76, something like that that was stable. So something that's going to be stable, but it's going to be a little bit slow, okay, getting to uh, the new set point because it's, it's almost unstable, okay. Um, almost unstable, okay. Wow, wait a minute. Let's go back and check this because I, I think I... Right answer. None of the above. Ah, no, it, it's never the answer. Yeah, that's right. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to go back to. So if you go back to to syllabus, um, let's see. I guess I had it on the schedule here. This this problem. Okay. Okay, so the the answer was actually C. Okay, so I'm right there at my stability limit. It may be. Um, you know, just close to that. So let me just do something a little bit more than that and just see if we, we stay stable. It may be just a numerical integration issue um, with MATLAB. Okay, so 0 0.85. Okay, I'm kind of going out on a limb here because this is going to invalidate my answer key if I don't, if it doesn't turn out. Okay, so it's stable, guys, at 0 0.85. And then where was the other limit? Okay, 8.29. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit less than that. Let me try 4. Um, if I did my root locus plot, let me go back to my root locus. There it is. Okay, so let's get something that's going to be oscillating, but, um, but stable. Okay, so if I have something right in this region. I didn't want to open the property oh. editor. Okay, so 1.5. Let's just do a 1.5 here and just see what happens with a gain of 1.5. It should say that it's oscillating yet stable. Okay, so if I type that in, 1.5 and 1.5. Okay, so it oscillates, but it's stable. And then let's go a little bit above it, maybe go to 10, a gain of 10. Um, so as I change the numerator part here, is that going to affect the stability? So it won't affect the stability because it's just the poles of the denominator. Okay. It'll just be what it gets to in terms of steady state response. Okay. Okay, so I, I computed that, and then let me do one more step. Okay, so it's unstable. So it's just right at that tipping point of going unstable, and you can see the oscillation is growing. Okay. Unless you look from this way on, and then they're shrinking. <laughs> yeah, if you look the other way. You okay. flip your head upside down. Okay, so any, other, any questions about this one? What was the blue line on the um, root locus? Oh, good. Good question. Yeah, that's, um, let me go back to that. Root locus. So there's a uh, another question on the blue line. That actually came from the measurement. Okay. So something that was 
see, I think it was I think it was from the measurement, wasn't it? Yeah, so something further over to the left on the root locus plot, that means that it's going to be um, very fast dynamics. If something over toward the right that becomes very slow dynamics, like an integrating system. Okay, so this this over here was actually associated with the um, with the the uh, the measurement device. Okay, so that was um, negative ten is with a gain of zero. So, or sorry, uh, uh, a pole of negative ten. So we had point one s plus one, and so when you set that equal to zero, that becomes s equals negative ten. So that's where it started, and then you can see it go back and forth. Okay, and that those um, will change. So the zero value means you know there's no the controller gain is equal to zero. And something other than that, the, the poles are going to change from the location. Okay. All right. Any other questions?